All right, so this week really has been the week that Bethesda has decided to release a bunch of updates for their games. Yesterday, it was for Fallout 76. Today, it is for Starfield. They release an end of the year update talking about how things have gone for Starfield this year, but more importantly for our purposes, how next year is going to go, what kind of content they're going to be dropping, what's their kind of roadmap. It isn't a full roadmap, but it gives us a nice little guide in terms of what's in Bethesda Game Studios' head and roughly what we're going to be getting, especially towards the earlier end of the year. So I want to be covering everything that you need to know, and let's get right into it. So this article, as I said, is titled Starfield End of the Year Update. It starts off by saying, with 13 million players since September, this has been the biggest launch in our history. And then they also have an infographic talking about those player numbers, days played, deaths, etc. The thing that I wanted to highlight here is that, yeah, this is the biggest launch in Bethesda's history, in Bethesda Game Studios' history. 13 million players is a lot, and I know obviously Game Pass is part of that, but that's the only measure that we have. Like, we can't look, compare this to Fallout 4. We can't really compare this to Skyrim. Obviously, these games have been out much longer, but when you have Game Pass in the equation, or when Starfield's really been promoted heavily from the get-go as a Game Pass title, this is apples and oranges that we're comparing here. But all I'm saying is that 13 million is a lot of players, and it's clearly their, their most successful launch, at least in terms of player numbers. Revenue, who the hell knows? But player numbers, at least, it seems like it's been doing good. Um, and then they continued to say, but we're not here just to say goodbye to 2023. We've been hard at work on everything coming to Starfield in 2024. While we're not ready to go into all the details just yet, here is a glimpse at some of the things we are, we are cooking up. First, we're targeting updates roughly every six weeks starting in February. These updates will include everything from quality of life improvements to content and feature updates. Join our Steam beta branch to be the first to try these updates as they begin rolling out. So first of all, every six weeks is a nice cadence to me. I, I think I'm not the first one to say this, but after the game launched this year, it felt very, very light on. It felt like there weren't really that many updates. And when there were updates, the patch notes were tiny and there weren't really many things coming to the game. So that was a little bit of a disappointment. But every six weeks next year, if they stick to it, uh, you know, promises uh, can be made, but actions speak louder than words. If they stick to every six weeks and if they are decently sized updates, in my mind, that's a good thing. And it's also good that they're continuing to use the Steam beta branch because it's always nice for these things to be tested out and for things to be fixed, similar to Fallout 76 when it comes to the PTS. Um, it's good that they're using that feature. So if you do want to get some of these Starfield updates early, you can test so on PC using the Steam beta branch. But continuing, they say, we've been reading all your feedback and are excited to start launching these new features. Features. We'll be adding new ways to travel and you'll now be able to access city maps while exploring the major cities. For those of you who love shipbuilding, we'll also be expanding on ship customization with ship decorations, new shipbuilding options and more. So two things to break down there. New ways to travel. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Elaborate a little bit. Maybe they're still figuring it out, but I'm very keen to know what they mean by new ways to travel. It just is there a way to cut down on all the loading screens? I doubt it. That's just the kind of game that it is. But something unique, interesting, teleportation. I don't know. It's a space game. Be inventive. Um, and then city maps. City maps just should have been in the game at launch. It, it, it was really frustrating. F the way I play games, like going through these cities, I, I literally kept getting confused. And you might call me an idiot, whatever. I couldn't remember where this shop was and that shop was and that shop was. When I played past Fallout games, or Fallout 3, even Skyrim, I knew where everything was. Like it was just easy to navigate those games. Starfield is not. So when you combine that with the fact that there was no freaking city maps, that was frustrating. So that should have already been a thing. Glad that it's coming now officially. I'm sure there's a mod uh, you know, to, to achieve the same thing, but glad that it's coming out eventually next year. And obviously ship customization, really cool that we're getting more ship customization, but I will say, I'm gonna call a gripe with the game. And this is a bit of a spoiler. So if you haven't finished the game and, and gone through the freaking Unity or whatever, I really don't like that we lose our ship. Like to, to put in all that effort, with customization, with painting and adding all this decoration, and it's going to be doubled down on next year with this update. What's the point if you're going to lose all of it? What is the point? I'm fine with losing weapons, right? I'm fine with that. But to lose your ship is just frustrating. That is like, ah, uh, like 
when I build a ship and I customize a ship, it's my ship. Like the Starborn ship, whatever, looks cool, but it's not my ship. To lose that is kind of annoying. I get losing a base, I get losing weapons, like it makes sense with the lore, but let me just fly my own ship. It doesn't have to be the Starborn ship. I get it, lore-wise, whatever, just let me keep my ship. I don't care. So moving on, the next paragraph. We're also excited to be adding all new gameplay options. With these new settings, you'll be able to alter your gameplay to allow for an easier or more challenging experience that will expand beyond our normal difficulty setting. These will allow you to easily customize carry capacity, cargo access distance, ship damage, vendor credits, how you suffer afflictions, new survival mechanics, and more. This is really nice, and it actually harkens back to what, I believe it was Todd, when they were talking about how Starfield actually used to be a much harder game. When they were developing it and in, in, in testing, Starfield was much more unforgiving, and they peeled that back a lot in time for, for launch. <laughs> I want to see a lot of that stuff come back. I mean, sh I would say start, you know, ship combat right now is actually more on the difficult side, and the rest of the game is kind of easy. Um, so, and you can obviously change your difficulty settings right now, but stuff when it comes to like you know afflictions and exploring, I wanted it to be a little bit more unforgiving, a, a bit more kind of like Fallout 4 survival mode. Um, just a, a bit more interesting. I don't know. A lot of that stuff, I just had the, the medical, you know, items that I needed to, to cure myself and it was pretty stock standard. I didn't really need to think about it. The fact that that will be able to hopefully really customize on difficulty and all these little things, that is really nice to see. Some people will say that we should have had this at launch as well. I'm less certain on this bit because I can get why, like this requires a lot of testing, a lot of fine tuning. They've I don't know, maybe they should have done that during development, whatever. But this one I'm okay with coming a little bit later, but the other stuff, like city maps, that should have been there previously before launch. Anyway, so good for, for it to be coming eventually. Next up, this is the, the controversial bit, and we're going to be spending a fair bit of time in this video talking about it. But official mod support, support and creations. Next, official mod support will be coming to Starfield with the launch of creations. Beginning early next year, Starfield will be getting its own exporter and you'll have, uh, ha you'll have access to a new creation kit. Modding has always been an enormous part of our games with incredibly commu incredible community made content, constantly bringing fresh new experiences. With the scale and systems in Starfield, we can't wait to see what you come up with. So Creations is obviously coming to Starfield. We kind of suspected this when it came to, to Skyrim earlier this year, or earlier this year, it was just a few weeks ago. We kind of knew that it was going to come to Starfield. We knew that when Creation Club was kind of folded, that it was going to come back in some capacity. Not just because there were signs publicly, but it was obvious. Like Bethesda Game Studios has been wanting to monetize modding in some way. And Skyrim Creations come out, has come out this year and it obviously there's been a lot of negativity. I've seen some positive, positivity towards it, but there has been a lot of negativity. The only comparison that we can make right now when it comes to Starfield is what they've done with Skyrim. So let's kind of cover that uh, for a little bit, just so I can kind of hopefully temper expectations or, and, and trying to like just decipher what this might mean for Starfield. This is going to be a good thing for the game or a bad thing for the game. So Skyrim creations essentially combine the previous mods and creation club items into a whole new thing called creations, okay? People can still importantly continue to upload free creations. That is not going away. They're not taking away anyone's ability to upload free mods and to share them with the community. Essentially what they're doing is just allowing that pathway for modders who are verified, and I'll get to that in a second, to be able to release the mods and earn money on them, okay? What's important is that any mods that are existing currently now that have been free, um, they can't be suddenly you know, removed and re-uploaded and, and be charged for. That's not possible. So Bethesda Game Studios specifically in their terms have said, creations must be all new to qualify for release. You cannot repurpose older releases or work by other authors unless contracted. So they're trying to rule that out, which is nice. I think some people might have been worried that what, what about all my free creations or free mods that I have? Are you just going to charge for them? People can't do that. This is new things mo moving forward and you have to be part of the verified creator program. So let's talk about that right now. So verified creators essentially can 
charge for the mods that they're, that they're creating. Um, so with Creation Club, members were hired and paid as professional contract developers. Now, verified creators can be professionals who earn royalties directly from the sale of their creations with an easier path to releasing their work. If admitted, you can send content through a vetting process, essentially. And if those uh, creations are approved, verified creators essentially earn a royalty from each creation sold. And they can set the prices themselves from a set selection of options. Um, you have to be an admitted you know, creator or, or a member of the program to be able to sell mods now. Um, and you can actually still continue to release free mods or free creations if you want to, even if you're part of this program, like you're not locked into just doing paid stuff. So you can do both, which is nice. And again, anyone can release free mods if you want to. Um, so there are terms, part of that, I'll link that in the description below. But the thing that I, there's actually a few things that I have questions about. First of all, I don't know what the royalty is. Beforehand, as I mentioned with Creation Club, people were just like, creators were reached out to by Bethesda Game Studios and they were paid a set amount and then Bethesda would essentially reap all the earnings. Now there is a benefit where creators, if they're verified and vet vetted, they earn a continuing royalty on their mods that are sold. I, I, ideally in kind of like perpetuity, at least until Skyrim is eventually taken down or whatever they do when there's a new console generation. But I doubt that's going to happen because this stuff is available on PC, right? So this is going to be here for a very long time. So I see creators themselves being able to earn more under this program because it's part of a royalty. Instead of getting hypothetically, let's say it was, I don't know, one to two grand to create a mod. Let's say they earn let's say 30% royalty on all sales of their mod, I would say, especially if it's a you know successful mod, they'd probably earn more in the long term, especially if they keep and keep and keep on releasing mods. But what my question is, is what that split is. How much are they actually giving to the creator? If you remember right back in the day, when they first tried paid mods with Steam, it was 45% going to Bethesda, 30% going to Steam, and 25% to the creator. That's why everyone was up in arms because people were like, why the hell are the creators who are doing most of the work on this mod, aside from obviously creating the store and distribution, which is no small feat, but why are the creators only getting 25%? It has to be more than that. I don't know what the amount is, um, but it has to be more than 25%. I would at least, at least like to see the creator get 50%, but I don't know if that's going to be the case because Steam is still involved, but Bethesda is still, is still involved. I think this is also available on the Epic Store as well. So. The splits, like, they have to be figured out. I think everyone has to kind of get a slice of the pie. I really hope the creators get a fair share. I still think it's a better system for them to get more money in the long term, but they need to get a decent royalty, okay? And I i have always been for, to, to be clear, I have always been for creators and modders being able to be remunerated for their work in some sort of way, all right? If like if I, I as a content creator as a YouTuber, I'd be an absolute hypocrite if I said no. Nah, modders shouldn't earn money for their work. Why should we pay for mods? I'd be I'd be a hypocrite. I have a Patreon open. I have memberships open on my, on my channel. I earn revenue from ad, from ads on this channel. How could I say otherwise? It's not fair for me to do so. And I believe in some sort of way, modders they do great work. They should be remunerated. I would love to see modders be able to do this as a career, like many of us do on YouTube, right? So let me just be clear with that. However, it all depends in my mind, again, on what that royalty split is and also how expensive these mods are because the fact is free mods still exist, okay? Free mods still exist that you can download. What is the benefit for me to go to a creations now and buy that and, and, and have the creator earn a royalty? What's the benefit for me? Am I getting like a mod that's way better than the free option because in many op in many times you're probably not they're probably similar sometimes the creations are better sometimes the free mods are better so what's the benefit for me paying because what i would prefer to do in all honesty is bypass the royalty system and directly donate to a modder if i really like their work because they're going to get more of the revenue if you go through you know a, a patreon or whatever it might be the split is much 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 more favorable towards the modder because they don't have Bethesda, Steam, Epic, whoever getting a slice of the pie. It would just be that kind of place like, you know, uh, Patreon or whoever the, the hosting provider is. I'd prefer to do that. But to counter to that is that how many times do people actually donate to modders? It's, it is, this is not an easy solution. And all I'm saying is that I, I just want modders to be compensated in some sort of way. But if they're 
if, if the cost of the mods are too much and if the creators aren't getting that many, like a higher percentage when it comes to royalties, I'd prefer to donate to them directly. So let's have a look at how expensive these new creations and, and the credits are because the credits themselves have gotten a little bit of a price increase, at least when it comes to Skyrim. And I assume the Starfield credits are gonna be very similar in price, if not the same in price. So for the credits, if you wanted to spend uh, five or 4.99 USD, let's just say $5, you get 500 credits. Roughly that's about 100 credits per $1 USD. It's gonna depend on your region. If you spend more, you get more credits per USD to a max of, if you wanna spend $50 USD, you get uh, 5,500 credits, which is about 110 credits per one, one US dollar. So let's just say very roughly, it's about 100 credits per US dollar. Okay, that's what it is. So right now with Skyrim, there were seven new creations that launched um, with, with the, the, the creation system. And they range roughly from 400 credits to 700 credits. So each of them are around four to seven US dollars. If you wanted to buy all of the new seven creations, it would cost you about 36 US dollars, but individually they're around four to seven dollars. And we're talking about um, homes, we're talking about quests, we're talking about um, armor and weapons and stuff like that. So like some of the armor and, and, and weapon sets go for about four US dollars or 400 credits. There's a home that's for, for five US dollars or 500 credits. And then the most expensive one is this kind of quest gameplay mechanic thing, which is about seven US dollars. So when you add them all up, they are a lot of money. 36 US dollars is probably the price of the game in some regions. And, and that's probably the, the anniversary edition. I, 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 need, I would need to check the numbers on that. But that's the price of a, of a lot of older games that you could get many hours of entertainment from. It's, it is a lot of money when you are getting, in the grand scheme of things, a relatively small mod when it comes to the scope of the game. Um, would I like to see these prices reduced? Yes, probably by about 60 to 70 percent, like of, of that current value. It just, I don't know. Because when I convert US dollar to AUD, because I live in Australia, like that's a fair bit of money. That's that, that is a fair bit of money for, for me getting an armor set, which again, you might not be able to get that exact equivalent armor set or mod as a free version on Nexus or, or on the regular free creations. But you can get something pretty similar and, and for a good value. And if that modder has a donate option, I could donate less and they'd get more of that cut. Do you see what I mean? This this is, I'm so torn on this freaking system. So to, to kind of go full circle to Starfield, uh, I really wish we knew what the royalty was. I get why Bethesda Game Studios hasn't released it, but I really wish that we knew how much modders were, were getting because I'd be more willing to spend these prices if I knew they were getting something at at least 50%, if not more. Because if you went to a Patreon and they're getting 80 to 90% or whatever it is, you could spend less and they get more. So I don't know, let me know in the comments below. I'm, I'm genuinely torn. I'm trying to bring up as many options and, and arguments as possible on, on both sides, but this is going to be interesting for Starfield. Let's say that. But anyways, the last paragraph uh, when it comes to Starfield's 2024 update is the new DLC, the new expansion. So they say, and lastly, the team is hard at work on the development of Shattered Space, which we knew. Um, our first major expansion coming in next year. You'll have new story content, new locations, new gear, and much more. We can't wait to share more with you next year. This is like suggested to me that Shattered Space is probably bigger than I thought first thought. I don't know why I thought Shattered Space was going to be just kind of like a couple of quests. If there's a new location, new story content, new gear, all this stuff, this seems actually pretty substantive. So I'm looking forward to that. Some people said that this should have been in the game before launch. Like, like come on, we got to draw the line somewhere. Like expansions are expansions. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, so I'm just, I'm just looking forward to, to, to seeing Shattered Space. Um, and to kind of keep going, Bethesda Game Studios also made a Reddit post talking about all their updates and they clarified certain things. So they said on Reddit in 2024, we'll be updating roughly every six weeks, starting with our next major update in Feb February, as I mentioned. And they said to clarify, this list is some of our plans for Starfield updates uh, throughout 2024. We're not quite ready to share the specific changes included in February's major update, but you can expect that information closer to the update itself. Essentially, and I've been asked this, was that list exhaustive of all the changes and the additions that they're making? No, like there's clearly more that's gonna come and once they're ready, they'll share that information with us. So it seems like it's gonna be a pretty substantive update. I wanna see a freaking 
page too long of patch notes. I want to see so much in this big update, um, but we probably shouldn't expect the world, especially if they're increasing the frequency of these updates to every six weeks. So anyways, my Sanders, that is all from me. Let me know what you think. The most, most controversial bit from this video is going to be the creations. I'm genuinely torn. I would like them to be cheaper. I would like to creators to get more of a royalty, but I don't know what that royalty is, so I can't really talk about it. Let me know your thoughts, and until next time, this has been Lone. Please take care of yourselves, and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.